God, it's getting bad out there. Greetings. I'm your host for this evening's special event, Dr. McNasty. Which, come to think of it, I'm the only host there ever is. But that's besides the point. Tonight, I decided to do something a little bit special. You know, I'm always doing either bootleg cinema or bootleg arcade or bootleg this or that. Just pretty much excuses to do video essays or top five countdowns. You know, that kind of usual shit. But tonight... I want to talk about something a little bit different, something I really haven't had a chance to do, and that is talk about shit that I wanted to do in the past, but I didn't have a chance, or shit that kind of got pushed away because other projects or my actual outside of streaming or YouTube career was being more demanding, so I had to put it away. So I figure I would collect all my little favorite projects I worked on in the past and I couldn't finish and put it out there for you guys. And who knows, maybe if you guys liked it enough from just what I showed you, I might get another little fire under my ass and finally finish it. So, with no further ado, I present to you McNasty's Missed Opportunities. I'm not going to lie, working and running Coffin Club TV for the past three years has been both difficult and a joyous one. Going through changes through styles from live action to animated to interviewing friends and, well, educating people on things that were going on in the time. I had a blast. But unfortunately, there was a lot of projects that I didn't get a hold of. And, well, uh, we're about to go through them. Starting with number one, one of my all-time favorites, Super Hyper Battle Fight, the manga. Super Hyper Battle Fight was the first of many failed projects. The series lasted very shortly, but there was a lot of love behind it. It was supposed to be a shonen style manga depicting the character Pepper and her father Master Roni whose, well, goal was to become the super hyper battle fighter. But unfortunately it has to deal with a mundane job of working in a pizza place which paralleled my life at the time, but with, well, grandiose anime action. The series only lasted, unfortunately, for two little mini episodes and one unreleased issue which I later just leaked on Instagram. Unfortunately I own the only copies or actual physical hard copies of the uh, mini manga which was uh, done originally with pen and paper and then transported to a digital format. Which led to our next topic which is the super hyper battle fight the animated series which kinda hurt worse when it failed. Shortly after the conception of Super Hyper Battle Fight, it wasn't long till I was starting to put the pen to my dome and starting to create an animated version of my little mini creation. But unlike the, the predecessor of Super Hyper Battle Fight, this would not get as far as only getting a few animated cells and, uh, well, a shit ton of storyboards and a script that was pretty much took straight from the uh, mini manga it didn't get far. Unfortunately, due to mental reasons and stress, I had to shelve it. But here's at least a brief glimpse of what it would have been like if I did go, you know, full on with it. But enough dwelling on that shit. Let's take a look at some other cool shit that uh, could have been with Coffin Club TV. My next project is kind of an interesting one. Growing up, I always had an affinity for horror comics, so like any other kid, I wanted to replicate them. So I tried my hand at making mock covers and my own little mini-series of comics that never took off, but one that I loved the most was a little series called Hot Gore Summer. Hot Gore Summer was a pseudo-anthology with an overarching plot that connected all the stories together that I spent a lot of hours 
that I spent a whole year just drawing panels and storyboarding along. And honestly, I want to do it again. This is the one project that eats away at me that I'm like, dude, it's right there. Just finish it. But as of now, it's not released. And it was a pretty interesting premise, especially with the camp storyline, which was going to be the very first issue, which got farther along than any other rendition of it. The uh, story was quite simple. Uh, it was just a straight slice of life comic strip about, you know, a teenager having to deal with camp. And then the last final issue, I was going to rip the, you know, rug right from underneath everybody and just turn into pure massacre. And I just loved that that general idea of making the reader feel comfortable and build this, like, I don't know, relationship with them and then just pull the rug out from underneath them and just desecrate it. And that was what the first issue was going to be about. And unfortunately, we never got that. And even more unfortunately, we never got the game that I wanted to release with it, which got even farther than the comic strip. Hogwarts Summer the Game was a game developed using RPG Maker, which the protagonist had a choice of picking either male, female, or neither as their choice, and having to navigate through the trials and choices of Summer Camp. Well, the final level being, well, a tragic and slaughtery scenario. But once again, just like all the other titles, this one never went fully through, but Unlike all the other titles, this one isn't given up on and has been temporarily shelved, but not thrown away fully yet. So who knows, you might just see this title hit the Steam stores before you know it. So, yeah, keep your fingers crossed for this one, guys. Wow, that storm's really picking up. Well, actually, that makes the perfect setting for my next uh, unreleased project, which, in a weird way, I know for a fact this unreleased project coming up. Instead of talking about it, how about I just show the trailer and see what you guys think about it in the comment. By the way, this is totally a shtick telling me to, you know, comment below, because I, I want to know what you got to think. And also, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is the only time I'm going to plug it, so please, like and subscribe. Well, I'm going to get done yapping and uh, let you guys watch the first couple of minutes of the newest Coffin Club TV program. That's not proper English, but I don't care. Roll the fucking footage. Good evening. Have you ever wondered if there was life after death? Have you ever been curious about the sounds that go bump in the night? Well, hopefully with this series, we'll find answers to those questions. 
I'm Dr. McNasty, and this is Coffin Club, Paranormal Project. Welcome to the editing room. I'm just going to keep it straightforward and frank with you, boys and ghouls. I've been into the paranormal well since the dawn of reality TV paranormal series, right up there with the birth and conception with Ghost Hunters. I was enthralled with the idea of catching ghosts. Who doesn't remember the almost seasonal exploits of scariest places on earth or MTV's fear or celebrity paranormal project, which most of which we've covered here on this channel. And I guess what we're here to capture tonight is, is it all bogus? We're all familiar with the Sam and Colby. Somebody, there was somebody on me, I okay. swear. It, okay. it, it like cut my legs. And the, the Mind Sea TV is. Have you felt anything at all? I really haven't. I haven't much either. And I'm just really, after just sitting here watching it all, I just wanted to think, is any of it really fucking real? Me being a skeptic throughout my years, especially after the infamous live Ghost Hunters event, which I will cover here on this series, it's hard to be optimistic, but... The point of me doing all of this and all of this production is to find out definitively is their life after death and are ghosts real? Okay, so here's the plan. I, myself, including Ezra and, of course, your boy Wardman will be going to haunted locations. Yes, I'm, I'm using quotes. We'll be going to haunted locations using, well, pretty much standard equipment. Your EMF detector, which is found on every Amazon, you know, wish list. You got your cat balls, which are used for motion detection. And of course, our cameras and our, well, electronic voice recorders and maybe a few more gadgets that we might find useful on the way. And uh, doing this, we hope to find, or at least collect, some type of evidence that might prove uh, maybe my faux YouTubers aren't just pulling facts out of their ass. Which, after looking at shit like this... Oh my god! Oh my god! It's kinda hard to fucking believe. Now let's get into the whys. Well, believe it or not, as far back as into the early 2000s, I was deep, almost balls deep into the paranormal research scene. I was reading every magazine, watching every show. I even ran my own website, which is shown there, Paranormal Trip, which was just devoted to capturing, collecting every bit of information I could about ghost hunting and the probability of an afterlife. and. To this day, I don't know why I stopped. I don't know what made me such a skeptic. Like I said, it could have been the, the previous uh, 2008 incident with the Ghost Hunters Live, but I just lost the magic. I stopped believing. And uh, in a weird way, I'm kind of doing this in hope that A, I either figure out the truth, which I doubt, you know, even if I did literally whip out a ghost, nobody's going to believe me. Or B, I just try to capture that magic that made me into ghost hunting to begin with, and hopefully, ho hopefully I get a little bit of both, I'm not gonna lie, uh, and not end up just a jaded piece of shit in a sea of jaded pieces of shit on the internet, you know? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that sneak peek at our upcoming series, uh, the Coffin Club Paranormal Project. But uh, on that note, it's time for me to go. I'm done showing you all my whales and woes and all my regret projects I never finished. And uh, I don't know, part of me thinks maybe if you guys, you know, beg me enough, I might just finish some of these projects. 
And that means every one of them, to be honest, because I had fun doing it, and either due to work restraints or mental health reasons or stress or God knows what, I never got them done. But on that note, I'm Dr. McNasty. I hope you guys have a great mental health day. Take good care of yourselves. Shower, because that, that shows you love yourself. You know what I mean? Go out there and just live your best life and all that other shit, you know? I don't know what I'm saying. Good night, kids. Bye!